Welcome to my lecture online. Let's say we have a block on a horizontal surface that has mass m. The coefficient of friction between the block and the surface is mu, assuming presumably the kinetic coefficient of friction as we're going to be moving the block. And a force of 5 newtons is pulling on the block, causing the block to move at a constant velocity, and we move it over a distance of 2 meters. We're trying to find the work done by the force, the work done by the friction force, and the change in the kinetic energy. So the work done by the force can be defined as the force times distance. And since the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement is the same, it's simply force times distance. We don't have to worry about the angle. So the work done by the force is equal to the force times the distance, which is equal to 5 newtons times 2 meters, which is equal to 10 newton meters or 10 joules. Now, what is the change in the kinetic energy? Well, the change in the kinetic energy must be zero because the velocity is constant. If the velocity doesn't change, the kinetic energy can't change. So we know that the kinetic energy is equal to zero, or at least the change in the kinetic energy. Now, we can also say that the change in the kinetic energy is equal to the energy added, minus the energy removed from the system. Now the energy added would be the energy by the force pulling on the block. So we add 10 joules of energy to the system, but we end up with a zero change, a net change of zero, which means that an equal amount of energy had to be removed from the system, and that would have had to be removed from the friction force. How do we know that? Well, another way of looking at it is to say that the force is equal to the mass times acceleration, and actually, of course, it's the net force that is equal to the mass times acceleration. And since the acceleration is zero because the velocity is constant, we know that the net force must be equal to zero, which means that the force minus the friction force must be equal to zero, which means that the magnitude of the friction force must equal to the magnitude of the force pulling the block. And therefore, we can say that the work done by the friction force is equal to the friction force times the displacement, but in this case, the friction force is pulling to the left, the displacement pulling to the right, there's an angle of 180 degrees, the cosine of 180 is minus 1, so in this case, this will be equal to minus 5 newtons, times 2 meters, which is equal to minus 10 joules of energy lost due to overcoming friction, and therefore the energy gained by the force pulling the block minus the energy lost from the friction force adds up to zero net energy change, therefore the kinetic energy change is equal to zero, the velocity is constant, the acceleration is zero, and the net force is equal to zero because the force must equal the friction force in magnitude. So now we go to case two. We have the same block with the same coefficient of friction, but now we're pulling it with a force of 12 newtons. And now we want to know what the change in the kinetic energy is, and we want to know what the final velocity is. What is the work done by the force in this case? Again, we're moving it a distance of two meters. So we can say that the work done by the force is equal to the force times the distance, in this case, the force is 12 newtons, the distance is 2 meters, so now we have 24 joules of work done by the force pulling the block. Nothing has changed about the coefficient of friction, the distance is the same, so therefore the work done by the friction force is going to be equal to the force times the distance, which is going to be minus 5 newtons, the same as before, times 2 meters, which is equal to a minus 10 joules. So we add 24 joules to the system by the force, we take away 10 joules because the friction force, so the net change of energy, the delta kinetic energy, is going to be equal to 24 joules minus 10 joules, which is equal to 14 joules. So the system has gained 14 joules of energy because the force adds more work than the friction force is taken out. Finally, the final velocity. We can say that the kinetic energy, because it started with zero, so the final kinetic energy is equal to one-half mv squared, or 
V squared is equal to twice the kinetic energy that it gained divided by the mass. So this is equal to, or V should be equal to the square root of two times the kinetic energy, which is 14 joules divided by the mass of 10 kilograms. And so that's 28 divided by 10, that's 2.8. Take the square root of 2.8. And that's 1.67 meters per second. So V equals 1.67 meters per second as the final velocity. So again, hopefully this video helps understand the difference between the force pulling the block, how much work it can do, the work done by the friction force, which is negative, it takes energy out of the system, the difference will be the energy gained. If the two are equal, there's no energy gained. If the force pulling puts in more energy than the friction force is taken out, you'll have a net gain of energy and an increase in the velocity. That's how it's done.